So we're going to start looking at uh, velocity, displacement, acceleration, all this in chapter 2. Chapter 2 specifically deals with motion in one direction or in one dimension. So we're not yet having things that are moving uh, both vertically and horizontally. We're not having um, like projectile motion yet. We're just dealing with objects that are moving either purely horizontally or purely vertically. Okay, so we're only on the, the one steps right now. Okay, so motion in one direction or in one dimension. Okay, so this study of physics is called mechanics. Okay, the study of motion of an object. Okay, so this portion of the physics, um, this basically mechanics section of physics is what we spend almost the whole year on is mechanics. Okay, the study of motion of an object. It takes into account forces. It takes into account energy. It takes into account um, all these types of things that we're going to study basically throughout the whole year. Okay, we'll get into waves and vibrations a little bit at the end. Um, but essentially our whole year is, is based on the mechanics sector of physics. Okay, so it has two parts. Mechanics has two parts. Uh, the first section here, the first part that we're going to cover is called kinematics. Okay. And kinematics is specifically a description of how our objects move. What's its speed? What's its, um, velo what's its velocity? What's its displacement? Things like that. Okay. How long did it take it to move there? All those types of things fall under kinematics. Okay. And we're, we'll use the term kinematics equations a lot, right? Because we have a lot of equations that go into our um, study of motion and how things move. Okay. The second section of that is the dynamic section, which it talks about why things move the way they do. Okay. And it has to deal specifically with forces. Okay. Why they move the way that they do. So we are talking first in chapter one about what we call translational motion. Translational motion is going to be motion that does not mean something is rotating. Okay? Moving in a circular pattern is different than something that's rotating. Okay, so we have to understand there's a difference between circular motion and rotating motion. So in geometry, when you translate something, what's that mean it's doing? Sliding. Yeah, it's just sliding. It's just moving around. That's what we're talking about here, translational motion. Something that's moving simply from uh, point A to point B. It's not rotating. Okay? So it might just be moving in a straight path, might be moving in a, a circular path or an arced path even. Um, but as long as it's not spinning, we're good to go. Okay? We're going to first look at things that are moving on a very simple straight line path. So, so we're going to um, start really simply, okay, as you should. Um, things that are moving very, very simply from point A to point B. Might be slowing down, might be speeding up, might be moving backwards or forward. Doesn't really make a difference uh, in terms of how we solve the problem. We just have to be really careful with negatives and positives in here. Okay? So you will start to understand that negative indicates a direction. It's not necessarily an indication of the number. Okay? So we'll start looking at why um, these signs influence the direction, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay? All of our measurements of motion uh, have, have to be made with a frame of reference. Okay. Almost all of our frame of reference is going to be with respect to the earth. Right? I'm standing on the earth's surface. It's going to be almost all of our frame of reference. Will I say that in every problem? No. Okay? But we need to understand that most of our problems are going to be standing on the earth. If I'm standing on the moon... What do you think is going to change? Gravity. Yeah, gravity would change if I'm standing on the moon. If I'm standing, or if I'm sitting in a moving car, I take on a new frame of reference because I'm in motion. Right? So there's lots of different things that could change our frame of mind um, and our frame of reference. But for the most of the time, we're going to be standing still on the Earth's surface, which is going to make our problems a little simpler. Okay? So let's say that my frame of reference would be I'm, I'm sitting on a train, right? 
I might feel like I'm sitting still, but realistically, my frame of reference is that I'm moving the same speed as the train is, right? So it might not feel like I'm particularly in motion, but I am, right? I'm moving the same speed as the train. Measurements of motion, so things like how far you've walked, your displacement, uh, how far or how fast you're traveling, those are, have to be given with direction along with its speed or uh, its velocity. And we'll talk about what these terms mean here in just a second. But essentially, you've got to give a measurement that includes direction. Directions can be really simple, like forward, backward. They can be positive, negative. They can be east, west, north, south. Um, there can be lots of different ways that you can indicate direction. Up, down, side, side, whatever. Okay, but it's also going to include a direction. And we'll talk specifically about that here in a second. Okay, so we've got to get used to including directions here with our, with our measurements. Okay. So I want to just take a look at this graphic really quickly. The first, um, first graphic here, this guy is, is standing on a resting truck bed. Okay, this is obviously something that happens every day, okay? He's standing on this truck bed, and he's throwing a baseball at this kid, okay? So the kid is at rest. The guy is at rest. The ball should be coming at a pretty normal speed, right? Okay, now you're catching the baseball, and the truck starts moving toward you. Is that baseball <laughs> going to be moving faster or slower than it would be if the truck was at rest? Right? It's going to move faster, or it's at least going to appear to you that it's moving faster. Because the thrower is in motion, and he's putting the ball in motion. Okay, So it's going to appear to you that that ball is coming to you a lot quicker than it is. Does that make sense? The frame of reference of that ball is changing because it's in motion towards you. So it's going to feel like it's coming at you really fast. Whereas if the truck starts moving away from you, it's going to feel like it's coming a little slower, right? The, the thrower is moving backwards. He's throwing the ball forward to you, so it's going to feel like it's coming a little bit slower. Okay, does that make sense in terms of frame of reference? All right, good. All right, in physics we use coordinate systems or the coordinate axes to represent our motion models. Okay, so we use a coordinate system a lot. A, a system or a motion problem, we're going to place the origin uh, of that coordinate system at wherever our motion is starting. Okay, and some, people, and some people do this differently, and that's okay. I will always put the origin, okay, or put zero, zero, or put my starting point where my motion is starting. Some people like to always put the origin at the ground. Some people like to put the origin, I don't know, wherever, but essentially I'm always going to put that origin where my motion is starting. That might not make a whole lot of sense to you right now, or it might seem uh, really common sense, but I want you to, once we get into these problems, you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit more, but essentially, essentially I'm going to place the origin where my motion is starting, and then I'm going to use cardinal directions to label those coordinates. So what are my four cardinal directions? North, south, east, and west. Good. You're going to become really, really good at cardinal directions. North, south, east, and west. Okay, so on a flat two-dimensional coordinate system, north is here, south, east, and west. Okay, so on my coordinate system, which of my two cardinal directions are going to be my positive coordinates? North and east, very good. And south and west are always going to be my negative coordinates. Right, so this is a visual that we need to be really familiar with. Moving east is always positive, moving north is positive, south and west are going to be negative directions for us. Okay, because our origin is right here. Right? Zero, zero. Everyone understand those graphing terms, hopefully? That's not a new concept for us. Okay, very good. Start here with a motion in one direction along the x-axis. We're going to start with purely horizontal motion. 
which means I'm just going to sit it on the x-axis every time I, I look at my coordinate system, right? If it's, if it's all horizontal, there's no reason for me to, to move it up on my coordinate system. I might as well just keep it on the x-axis, right? <laughs> so that means if I'm looking at an object in motion, at any point in time, I can locate that object on the x-axis. Is it to the right of where it started? Is it to the left of where it started? What are, what are we looking at here? Okay, or is it in front of where it started or behind? We can find that object at any point, and it's going to still be along the x-axis because it's not moving vertically, right? We're only looking at motion in one direction or in one dimension. So I can find my object at any time along that x-axis. And when I locate an object and I tell how far it is from where it started, it's called the displacement. So it's its displacement, a change in position of the object. Okay, and I want you to make a special note about displacement. Displacement is, is specifically how far an object is from where it started. Okay, so how far an object is from where it started. That's a specific definition for displacement. Okay, how far it is from where it started. There is a difference between the distance a person has walked and the displacement of a person. Okay, we're going to look at an example here that kind of shows that. There's a difference in distance and displacement. So we work with displacement more often. How far we are from where we started. Okay, so let's look at an example here to tell the difference between distance and displacement. Okay, so the example that we're looking at here says Joe walked 40 meters east, then turned around to walk 50 meters west. So I'm going to draw this on our coordinate system here uh, as an example. Okay, so 40 meters east, then 50 meters west. So you can write this down or you can just follow along. That's fine. It doesn't really make a difference which way. But I'm going to put this up on our coordinate system. Okay, so she's going to start here at our origin, right? I'm always going to pick the origin to be the start of our motion. And let's say that each of these um, coordinates is 10 meters. Okay, each of those boxes, each of those lines on our grid is 10 meters. So she's going to start walking 40 meters to the east. Is that going to be to the right or to the left? To the right. One, two, three, four. She walked 40 meters east. Then she turned around and walked 50 meters west. Does that mean we're going to start from the origin and go 50 meters west? No, she's going to start right from where she ended, which is right about here. She's going to walk 50 meters west. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and she ends up right over here. What is her final displacement? 10 meters west, right? So her final displacement was 10 meters west. What was the total distance that she traveled? 90 meters, okay? So the difference is displacement needs a direction. So total displacement was 10 meters west. Her total distance was 90 meters, Displacement needs a direction, so that needs to go into your notes. Displacement needs direction. Distance does not. So she walked a total of 90 meters. Her displacement was only 10 meters west. She ended up 10 meters from where she started, 10 meters west of where she started. Okay, so displacement ha must have both magnitude and direction. Okay, magnitude is just the size, that's the number. So the 10 meters, that's its magnitude, west is its direction. Displacement has to have both of those things, magnitude and direction. And this is an example of what we call a vector. 
Displacement is an example of a vector. So vectors, more specifically, any vector must have both magnitude and direction. Okay, any vector has to have magnitude and direction. We're going to talk about lots of different types of vector. Velocity is a vector. Acceleration is a vector. Uh, forces are all vectors. So there's lots of different vectors we're going to talk about. This just happened to be the first one. Okay, so all vectors have to, have to have both magnitude and displacement. Magnitude and direction. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to do that a lot. Um, all vectors have to have both magnitude and direction. Displacement is just the first example that we came to of that. Okay, so displacement is a vector. It's got to have both of those things. Distance is not a vector. Distance doesn't need to have direction. Okay. So a vector is a measurement that has to have both magnitude and direction. Okay, we just talked about that. Vectors have to have both of those things. I'm going to say that over and over and over and over again, and some of you are still going to forget to put your direction on your answers. Okay? Magnitude and direction. Anytime we represent a vector, we do it with an arrow. So you'll notice that when I was drawing on that coordinate system, I used an arrow. It might have seemed arbitrary to you as to why I did that. Um, you might have just thought it was because we were pointing in that direction, we were heading in that direction, but that's the point. Okay? The reason that we use an arrow is that it gives us a good indication of direction, and a vector has to have both magnitude and direction. Okay? So vectors are represented by arrows. Vectors can be both positive and negative. Right? It depends on which way we're drawing them. It depends on um, the direction that that object is going. Okay? So vectors can be both positive or negative. Displacement for right now is indicated by a delta x. What does delta mean? Change. Delta means change in. But I want you to start specifically thinking that delta means final minus what? Initial. Okay? In physics, we use a lot of final position, initial position, final velocity, initial velocity, things like that. So we've got to start thinking in terms of final minus initial. Okay? So that's what this displacement is telling us. Why do you think we chose x as our variable for our displacement here? Yeah, we're on the x-axis, okay? So here, this is telling us that we've got some sort of horizontal displacement. If I gave you this variable, delta y, what do you think that would be telling us? Yeah, we've got vertical displacement. Okay, so we've got to make sure that we have the distinction between x and y in terms of horizontal and vertical. Okay, so if I see a delta x, that means I want to look for our horizontal displacement. I want to find out how far horizontally that thing is from where it started. Okay, and the same thing goes for y. We look at how vertically different it was from where it started. Okay. All right, let's talk about speed and velocity. Okay, speed and velocity, believe it or not, are two different things. So speed is the amount of uh, distance or how far something travels in a given time frame. And then your book gives another definition for average speed, right? Distance traveled divided by the time it takes to travel that distance. That's the same thing. Okay, there's instantaneous speed, which is using really, really small time intervals, almost derivative time intervals, or there's average speed. We're going to deal with average speed, right? We're not dealing with uh, derivatives of time intervals or really small time intervals. We're not doing that, okay? We will deal with the average speed, the average velocity, things like that. So over a little bit longer length of time. These two definitions, for your purposes, essentially mean the same thing, okay? Okay. So if I'm looking at an object that travels 240 miles in four hours, that should give us an average speed of 60 miles per hour. Does that mean they travel 60 miles per hour the entire trip? Right? Sometimes there may be 59. Sometimes there may be 61. Right? If we're looking at instantaneous speeds, we're going to break that down into a lot smaller time intervals. Here, over our entire trip, we're going to go for the average. And that's most of the time what we're looking at here is our average over the whole um, path or the whole trip that we're looking at. 
Velocity is a vector quantity of speed, which means we have to include direction, right? If velocity is a vector, we have to have what two things? Direction and magnitude, okay? When you're calculating speed, you're going to use the distance divided by time because distance does not need a direction, okay? So speed and distance are both quantities that we call scalars, okay? Those are both scalar quantities. And what a scalar quantity is, is a, is a measurement that needs no direction, needs no direction. So vectors need magnitude and direction. Scalars only need magnitude. Okay, scalar quantities do not need direction. So speed is an example of a scalar quantity uh, and distance is an example of a scalar quantity. Okay, so right now vectors we have two examples and scalars we have two examples. Right? Okay, very good. Okay, so velocity means we use displacement instead of distance. So there's two different ways here. Our speed and velocity might not be the same uh, value for each of these different um, examples. Oh, okay. Your first physics equation. That's so cute. Okay. Uh, velocity is equal to delta x over t. So velocity is equal to displacement over time. Change in displacement over change in time. So this equation you will use over and over and over and over again, okay? So this might be a good one for your equation sheet. Change in displacement over change in time. It's important to understand that this velocity um, value right here is going to be for when something is moving at constant velocity. Okay, not speeding up, not slowing down. This equation right here is for something that's moving at constant velocity. We'll get to next class uh, things that are speeding up or slowing down, things that are accelerating. This equation is specifically for things that are moving at constant velocity. Okay, so just kind of tuck that away because later you're going to overthink problems for something that's moving at constant velocity when you could just use this equation. Okay, so constant velocity. Do speed and velocity always give us, uh, have the same magnitude? Let's think about that first example that we did. Okay, if we look back to our walking example, Joe walked 40 meters east, then 50 meters west. Okay, so let's say on average it took her 60 seconds to complete this. If we calculate speed, we need to use distance, right? So let's say that, uh, let's calculate speed first. The distance that Joe walked here was how many meters? 90. Okay, so if I want to calculate speed, I'm going to use the same equation. Uh, there's no, uh, we don't get a whole separate equation for speed, but essentially it's distance over time, right? You don't need to put that one in your equation sheet because you're going to use it the same as you would velocity, but we'll almost always use velocity, okay? We rarely, rarely, if ever, calculate speed. We'll always calculate velocity just to include that direction. Okay, but just for example's sake here, uh, if we're going to calculate speed, we would take distance over time. Okay, so go ahead and calculate that out for me. Good. 1.5 meters per second. Do we need uh, to include a direction here? No, and can we really even include a direction? Because she walked one direction and then another, right? So we don't really even have a direction that we could include, all right? Now let's look at uh, if we solve for the displacement and we solve for velocity. What did we tell us that our displacement was in this example? 10 meters what? West, okay? We just use a, a capital letter for our cardinal directions, okay? 10 meters west. So our velocity, if we take that divided by... 60 seconds. Does time ever have a cardinal direction? No. no. Okay. So if I take 10 meters west divided by 60 seconds, tell me what my velocity is. Point 
0.167 meters per second west. Okay, so here is her velocity. She went one way and then backtracked. So it looks like maybe she didn't even walk that fast. She could have just walked really slowly to the west and had the same velocity. Okay, but she went forward and backwards. So her average velocity for that trip was 0.167 meters per second west. Because she ended up west of where she started, um, and that's going to be her average velocity. Oops. They travel to the west to get to about 30.5, so it ends about right there. They're just right at 30. Do we see where that diagram came from? Okay, drawing those really little simplistic diagrams are going to help you solve these problems. Okay, so we traveled, let's say here, to the west. So if I want to find velocity, I'm going to take change in displacement over change in time. Okay, even though we weren't given a final and an initial time, what do we know delta t was equal to? Three seconds, right? Our initial time, we know it was just zero. Right? We don't need to overthink that part of it. Okay, so change in x means final position minus initial position, so 30.5 minus 50 over 3 seconds. No, we keep the negative, okay, and I'll show you why. So we get a value of what for the velocity? Negative 6.5 meters per second. Okay, what is this negative indicating to us? It's west. Very good. Okay, so when we get a negative velocity, that means we're moving in the backwards or the negative direction. So here's what you should do when you answer a question like this. You can leave your answer at negative 6.5, or you can answer velocity equals 6.5 meters per second west. Here's what you cannot do. Negative 6.5 meters per second west. Right, because it's a double negative. Okay, so you got to pick one or the other. I'll take either the negative or the cardinal direction. Don't give me both. Okay. If we were end up moving to the east, would I need to put a plus sign? You think in front of my number? No, I know a number is positive if it's positive. Okay, so that means that we're moving in the positive direction. Okay, so you could still tack an east on there if you wanted to, uh, but understand the negative tells us that it's negative. Any questions about that? Feeling good about basic velocity so far? This asks us, how far can a cyclist travel in a 2.5 hour trip if her average speed is 18 kilometers per hour? So 18 kilometers per hour, using the units, looking at units alone, what value is that giving us? Distance or time or speed? Speed, right? Kilometers per hour, that's a, a, a velocity or a speed unit. So we need to be able to start picking out our variables just based on the units alone. Okay, use that as a good clue for you to start picking out those variables. So we're going to look at speed or, or velocity here. We're technically not given a direction. Um, so you can use that speed equation even though it's the same as our velocity equation. Okay, or since it's a positive velocity, we can assume that she's moving east. You can do either one. It's, like I said, today is really the only day that we even mess with speed. From here on out, we really go all velocity, and we'll be, I'll be a little more careful with the directions. But essentially, this is what we're, equation we're going to use. So we're going to plug in the 18 kilometers per hour as our speed or as our velocity. How far can they travel? That means what variable are we solving for? Distance or displacement or whatever you want to say. Yeah, we're going to solve for x. I'm going to, I'm going to use delta x because I want us to get used to using that uh, velocity. Okay? And then our time was 2.5 hours. Do our units match here? Hours and hours. Yes. If this was seconds, we'd be in trouble. We'd have to convert one of those two things. Okay? So it's important that our, our units for this whole equation, they have to match. Okay. How do I solve for delta x here mathematically? Multiply those two things together. Good. 
And that means my x value is equal to how many? What, sh what should our units be for distance or displacement here? Kilometers. kilometers. Good. They're going to come out in kilometers because our velocity or dis our speed was given kilometers per hour. So what do we get for our value of how far she's traveled? 145? Just 45. Okay, I was going to say. Um, 45 kilometers. All right, do we understand mathematically how we got there? Good.